Welcome everyone, this is Professor Richard Holizak, and this is a brief video on running an Amazon EMR cluster in the AWS Academy Data Engineering Sandbox. So to get started, make sure that you are logged into your AWS Academy account. You should see the AWS Academy Data Engineering course, and we can click into that. Then we're going to click under Modules, and we will scroll down to the sandbox. All the way down here near the bottom. And here we go, Sandbox Environment. So we'll click on Sandbox Environment. That'll take a second to pull up. And you will notice here that my sandbox is not running. You can see the red dot here. That means it's currently stopped. I can see how much I've used of my sandbox budget. And we currently don't have a lab running. So in order to get started, we're going to go ahead and click Start Lab. That will take a few seconds to get going. While this is starting up, you'll notice that the AWS icon here has turned yellow, and I can go over here to click on the AWS details. What this will give me is the link to the command line interface. It'll also give me links for the secure shell keys, uh, the .pem file and the .ppk file, which we would use if we are going to connect using secure shell. And if we wanted to use single sign-on, we would download the URL here. What I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to download the PEM file, and this will allow me to connect later on with, uh, with Secure Shell. I'm going to pause the video because it's going to take about five minutes for this to finish starting. And what you'll look for here is, in this left corner, you'll look for the AWS icon to turn green. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and I will return when I am green. It just occurred to me that while we are waiting, we can read through some of the information they have here about the sandbox, especially things like the budget and how that budget does not get updated for about 12 hours, and some of the restrictions on the sandbox. For example, the sandbox is restricted to using US East 1 or US West 2 regions. Since our school is on the East Coast, we usually use US East 1. And then for some of the other services, there might be other restrictions. For example, if we wanted to set up an EC2 instance, we would be restricted to using these series of instance types. There's a maximum of 32 virtual CPUs to use at any time and a maximum EBS volume of 35 gigabytes. For an EMR cluster, we can see some of the roles that are available, and the cluster instances have to be restricted by the instance types that you'll see, you'll see up here. And while we were reading all of that, our AD AWS icon has turned green, so now we can go ahead and launch into our console. All right, this is a little error that we might sometimes see. If this is the second time in a day that you have been logging in, you might see this service sign-in issue. What we do here is we'll just click to log out. We can close this tab, and then we'll click to get back into it. Now, you're going to see that error if you've done this several times in a day. Now that we have our AWS Management Console running, just remember that we are working with the North Virginia, that's the US East 1 region, and you can see this is the account that we are working in. From here, we can launch an EC2 instance, we can load data into S3, we can launch an EMR cluster, we can look at billing and cost explorer and, and many other things. For the purposes of this example, we are going to launch an EMR cluster. As you may know, EMR stands for Elastic MapReduce, and this is Amazon's implementation of the Hadoop ecosystem. If you don't see these in the recently visited, you can always search for EMR at the 
top of the screen here. So we're going to go ahead and click into EMR. In my example, I've launched many different clusters. You probably will not see any the first time you run this. That's okay. We're going to go over here and click Create Cluster. You can give your cluster a name. I have been using the current date and maybe the time or another letter here just so that I can distinguish among the different clusters that I have been running. I've been setting the cluster release, uh, sorry, the EMR release to uh, version 6.13.0. And as far as the applications are concerned, if all you want to do is maybe Hadoop and Spark, or if you just want to work with Spark, you can select the Spark application bundle. Just as um, an example, I'm going to turn on Hue and Livy, uh, Hadoop, and we might want to use Jupyter with our um, Jupyter or Hive with our cluster. So I'm just going to turn those on, and that's going to, just going to be a custom application bundle. For the operating system options, just choose Amazon Linux release and automatically apply the latest Linux updates. As far as the cluster configuration goes, we're going to choose a set of instance groups. We will use a single primary node that's of instance type m5.xlarge. Notice that has 16 gigabytes of memory and four processor cores. We'll use a core node, which again is an m5.large, xlarge. And we'll use a task node, which again is an M5X large. Just as a reminder, the primary node is the node we will connect to, and that controls the activities in the cluster. The core node has some storage as well as processing capabilities, and the task node is just used to process data. Under our cluster scaling and provisioning option section, we're going to set our cluster size manually. And for now, we're just going to do one core cluster, sorry, one core node and one task node. We can leave the networking section with the defaults. We can leave the steps. We're not going to process any steps automatically. For cluster termination, we're going to set this to one hour or whatever time length you think you might be working. If you're going to work for two hours, you can put two hours in there. Uh, for my demonstration purposes, I'm going to set it for an hour. And what this will do is if we forget it will automatically terminate the cluster so that we stop being charged for it. For bootstrap actions, there's nothing to put here. Cluster logs, we can leave these as a default. The tags, we don't have to add anything. The software settings, we don't have to do anything for that. Under the security configuration and EC2 key pair section, we're going to choose the vo key. That corresponds to that labuser.pem file we downloaded before. So we'll just select that. I think it's the only one on the list. You don't need to pick a security configuration. Under the IAM roles, we're going to choose the EMR default role for our service role. And for our instance profile, we're going to choose the EMR EC2 default role. I know in the instructions that the um, lab gave, it said to use the lab user role or the lab role, but I found that that doesn't work. Uh, somehow the cluster won't start when we use that. So we're just going to stick with these two default roles. There's really nothing to change here for custom automatic scaling. We'll just leave that all alone. And you can see a list of options that we have configured. So most of these things were really the defaults. The most that we've really had to change are to obviously choose those roles, um, but really just choosing what applications we want to run on the cluster. So after that, I'm going to click Create Cluster. And now we have another waiting game. So what's going to happen here is Amazon is going to start up a cluster for us. This honestly can take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Starting up a cluster for the first time seems to take a really long time. So we're just going to have to wait it out. Some things that we can eventually look for here will be our primary node DNS. We're going to need to know what the um, IP address is for that. And we're going to make some other notes of other uh, different settings. So again, I'm going to pause. And this will literally take something like 15 or 20 minutes. You can click the refresh button to sort of see how things are going. And we'll be back when 
the status changes from starting to waiting, then we'll know our cluster is ready. So it's been about 11 minutes since I started the cluster and it still is in starting status. We can look at some of the information that's been filled in though. We already see that we have a primary node uh, DNS. So this will be the server that we will connect to when we want to issue some commands for Hadoop and Spark. We can also see under properties, if you scroll down, you'll see that the security group has been created. And what this will help us do, we can go down here and look at the primary node security group. We can actually do a little bit of work here to set up um, the primary node to allow us to connect using Secure Shell. So while we're waiting for this cluster to finish starting up, we can go ahead and click on this link for the EMR managed security group for the primary node. Click on this, we'll get a new screen and it should show us here the inbound rules. You'll see a bunch of rules that are here already, but one of the rules that you do not see is going to be the one for Secure Shell. So we'll go over here and click Edit Inbound Rules. We'll scroll down to the bottom. We'll choose Add a Rule. And under Custom TCP, we'll just change that to SSH. That would change the port to 22. And for our range, we're going to just choose the anywhere range, which is the 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. That's the CIDR block. And you can make a note that this is for Secure Shell. Once we have all of that in place, we can click the Saved Rules button. And that should then show up on the list. Here it is. Here is our new rule that will allow us to connect with Secure Shell. So again, that's just something that we can do while we're waiting for everything else to set up. Now I'll go back to my other window here and we'll do a refresh and it's still starting up. So I'll pause the recording again and we'll just wait a little bit longer. Okay, so here we are back after pausing the recording. Uh, it actually did not take 29 minutes. I got and distracted. Um, I believe if we had chosen fewer applications, it would have probably taken a lot less time, but uh, we can experiment with that in the future. Just to clarify what we have now created, we can go here and look at the instances, and we can see that there are three EC2 instances that are running, a primary, a core, and a task. So there's one of those each. And we have all of these applications installed that we can work with. And now we can go ahead and connect to our primary node. Remember the primary node is the node that coordinates all of the efforts. So the important thing to note here is the IP address of our primary node. And in this case, this one's uh, 391, 231, and 180. So what I'll do here is I'm going to choose, I'm going to go to the search box and choose EC2 and I'll right click and open that up in a new tab. So now we've got our EC2 page open and we can see our instances that are running. And what was that IP address again? I've already forgotten it because I was talking. It uh, should say, sorry, go back to the main screen here. 231-180, so let's take a look at that, 231-180. Okay, so this is, our, this is our primary node. So we'll go ahead and click the checkbox here, and we can click the connect button. So this is how we can use the built-in instance connect to go right to that primary node. When we're dealing with an EMR cluster, the default username is Hadoop, H-A-D-O-O-P. So we just have to fill that in for the username and we'll go ahead and click connect. And fingers crossed that this will work. Wonderful. So we are here at our, logged into our EMR cluster primary node. And from here we can issue Hadoop commands as well as Spark, as well as um, Hive and uh, many of the other different Hadoop applications 
that we have talked about in the past. For example, because we have Spark installed, we can run PySpark. This might take a few minutes because it's the first time I'm running it, but it looks like we have our log level set to warn, so it's going to warn us about any little things that it might find, but should ultimately go ahead and give us our PySpark prompt. Okay, we can see that PySpark is completely started up. We can see the Spark context. We can see the Spark session. And now we know that we have a Spark cluster already up and running. If you would prefer to use your own Secure Shell client instead of using the Instance Connect, I have a little demo set up for that. Again, we want to make sure that we know what that primary node DNS is, as well as remember from the Sandbox environment, we downloaded this PEM file. The file is called labsuser.pem, so we should have that downloaded. So we need those two pieces of information. I'm just going to copy my primary node DNS. I'm going to open up a command prompt, change to my downloads directory, and let me just make sure that that PEM file is there. So here is the uh, private key file that we can use. So my identity comes from labsuser.pem, and we're going to connect to Hadoop at. And here's the public DNS name. Again, how did I know this? I was looking at the primary node DNS right here. So we're just going to grab that and fill it in. Again, we're connecting with the to this IP address, or sorry, this host name with this Hadoop user. Whoops, I wrote Hardoop. And we have the same login. Okay, so this is another way that you can connect to your primary node in your cluster. Okay, once we are all done working in our cluster, it's important that we terminate the cluster. Uh, notice that the cluster would have automatically terminated in one hour of idle time, but in my case, I'm going to terminate it now so I can end this video. So I click the Terminate button, and it just asks me to confirm. Now if we go back to our EC2, we'll see that it's currently terminating, and that's good. We're all set there. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to close down the Sandbox environment. And to do that, we'll just navigate back to our Sandbox modules. We see that it's currently running, so we can click on End Lab and says, are you sure you want to end the lab? We'll just say yes. That'll turn yellow for a few minutes, and then it will eventually turn red. So now we know we have terminated our EMR cluster, and we have shut down the lab, so we'll no longer be charged any money for the lab or for our cluster time. And that concludes the video.